Universal oxygen sensors are not that difficult to test because simply we can use a scan tool. Let's look at a scan tool screen and compare it to some of the things we were talking about in the oxygen sensor operation. Let's bring that chart up. That chart explained how much current was required to turn the rich or lean value back to a lambda value of 1. When we look over here in the scan data, we see a lambda value of 2, a very lean condition. And we can see that at the other end of the arrow, 2.0 is at the far right, or a very lean condition. This is representing a 29.2 two eight to one air fuel ratio. It's lean because this was during a heavy deceleration. Now what is the computer going to do to get this back to stoichiometric or a lambda value of one? Just to prove to you the scan data shows us how the operation is working in real life in your service bay. When we look at it it's going to require a 258.0 milliamp current, and that's positive, there's no negative sign there, to return this system back to lambda. So let's look at some additional scan data. This is different scan data now. And we can see that we have a red and a blue graph. The red graph is bank one, sensor one, and the blue graph is bank two, sensor one. When we look at it, we're looking at a graph of lambda values. And of course, right here where it's beginning to write, we can see that we have a lambda value very close to a lambda of one. We have 1 1.0 and that's telling us we're very close to stoichiometric. When we compare that to the gasoline methanol E85 chart that we had before, a lambda value of 1 for gasoline is 14.7. And that means right there where that graft, the blue one and the red one, is starting to write, this engine is running at 14.7 or very, very close to it at this moment. Over here, we can see that the throttle, or the load, was changing. In the service bay, we whacked the throttle a few times. Now, just partially the way down, we did not whack it all the way to the floor. And that's what those ripples represent. And if you noticed, that both sensors responded to the throttle changing. Here, we're looking at that chart at the top with an arrow pointing to 0.7. Why? Well, drop down to the graft where it's circled there, and we can see the red graft is actually reading 0.7. And that means we are at an 11 to 1 air fuel ratio at this moment. Notice carefully that the blue graft, the bank 2 sensor 1, did not respond as quickly as the bank one sensor did. Now this one time does not mean anything. If it happened every time you did it, it would mean that the bank two sensor is not responding correctly. But if it happens once, just remember that you're looking at scan data. What happened in this case was that scan data for the bank two sensor did not catch up with the other oxygen sensor scan data. And that means it was just an anomaly. It had nothing to do with the car itself or the truck itself. It actually was just something from the scan tool. It happens often, meaning that when you're comparing data on a scan tool, do it a couple times if it fails simply because you got to make sure that you just didn't catch in this case the bank two sensor one exactly in this point where it wasn't responding but in reality when we did this test over and over again only a few times did we catch it where scan data wasn't updating both sensors are working fine on this vehicle in fact that 11.1 .1 means that we were going to a 
decimal, uh, decimal 7 lambda value. Now let's look at a histogram or a graph if you will. Now we can look at the top red rectangle there and we can see the blue line. That's where the air fuel ratio is at this moment we grab this screen. But we can see the gray marks there and we can see where we were very very lean on a deceleration. Now at the bottom rectangle is showing us RPM was changing and if you remember a few graphs back, a few scan data screens back, we had a 29 to 1 air fuel ratio and that's what this histogram or this graph is showing us. What if you didn't make any sudden throttle moves? You just drove this vehicle steady and you were looking for an intermittent problem. This histogram will tell you about the air fuel ratio at any given moment it doesn't tell us in the gray area, the gray lines, exactly what the air fuel ratio was, but it certainly shows us that it was close to 30. Now we look at another graph here, and at the top we can see that lambda value of 1 for gasoline E85 and methanol on that. And we're looking at a wideband sensor in the red for bank 1, sensor 1, and the blue is the bank 2, sensor 1 again. And we're showing this to you because the lambda values are exactly 1.0. Let's look over here on this bank 2 now at a different time what I want you to see in that arrow there is we're measuring current now. We're looking at bank 1, sensor 1, the equivalent ratio, the lambda value, and we're looking at the current value. Now look at this screen carefully. The decimal 05 is right there at the end of the graph where it's beginning to write. And we're showing you in the center that the current is running even go back over here to the right and the left of that point and you can see we must have changed the load because the lambda value changed but it doesn't seem that the current changed now take a look at that 0.05 current that's a very minuscule value of current and that's why we didn't see it in the graph so don't panic when you see the graph. Make sure you toggle through the entire recording or watch it live and make sure that the current does change as it's supposed to change. Remember that a zero current indicates a lambda value of 1 and we're showing it to you here. And if they were negative, they would have a negative sign in front of them. So there's another valuable diagnostic PID available in OBD2 Diagnostic Test Mode 1 PIDs and that is the internal resistor. Now we can't actually go inside the circuitry of the oxygen sensor and measure this resistor but we do get diagnostic trouble codes for it. In the very early days of universal sensors that resistor was in the connector and now it's inside the computer. So the internal resistor can be checked with scan data. As you can see here, we have 31 and 32 ohms. And for this manufacturer, that's within specification. Note something very important here. Note the close correlation of the changes in the engine speed and the O2 current. This oxygen sensor is responding very quickly there's much better ways to do that. Look at the test results of the oxygen sensor monitor or OBD2 diagnostic test mode 5. Now let me tell you something about that. Most manufacturers don't use OBD2 diagnostic test mode 5 anymore. They put the test 5 results in mode 6 and that's what we're looking at here. The oxygen sensor monitors the test results of the last time the monitor ran and completed. Now look slightly above in the green there. When we find the oxygen sensor monitor and the oxygen sensor monitor heater on the right side, this test has ran and it's completed. So we know that the test results are valid. 
here's a different screen and it's showing us the rich to lean response times in mode 6 and as we read it from left to right we can see we have a minimum and a maximum and our value at the far right is telling us that this oxygen sensor is fast enough. We saw it a few slides back when we were looking at current and comparing it to RPM. It looked fast enough to us there, but here the computer did a test that we can't frankly do, and it's telling us that oxygen sensors are not slow, they are actually fast enough, and it tells us that for all the sensors. As we go down, we can look at the rich to lean response rate. Now just let's go back for one minute when we go up here and we see that was rich to lean response time and here we're talking about the rate and the time delay and once again the value shows that it's within the max or min and that means it passed. Here we've done an oxygen sensor test simply by listening to what the computer had to say when it tested it. Now the PCM test results are going to show the heater test results also so we can see that the heater is working correctly. Here we have the heater monitor and the heater current for each of the sensors. When we look at the oxygen sensor mode 6 information, we're looking at a different scan data test here, and we can see that there's a lot of mode 6 information don't forget to scan down in mode 6 information if you're not that up to date with mode 6 maybe your scan tool does what our scan tool does it shows us fails sometimes a scan tool just simply says failed or pass in our case it gives us the values but you can see that our decimal 480 is red indicating that we have a fail in our mode 6 for our oxygen sensor test ratio results. Now that's the catalyst monitor bank 2 oxygen sensor.